All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. So I can't believe this is actually a talking point, uh, but it is 2024, and I guess this stands here. Uh, Justin Fields has officially unfollowed the Chicago Bears on Instagram and followed a bunch of players on the Atlanta Falcons. And Falcons fans and Falcons media are losing their minds thinking they're about to trade for Justin Fields. Now, my stance is still... I want Justin Fields to be the quarterback for the Chicago Bears, the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears this upcoming season, but I really don't think it's going to happen. I really don't think Ryan Poles is going to take the fourth year of a quarterback he did not draft and just say, you know what, let's run it back. But, 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 but if they do decide to run it back with Justin Fields, and nonetheless, even if they don't, uh, the point still stands. The Chicago Bears' future is very, very, very bright, guys. You can draft Caleb Williams. You can draft Drake May. You can keep Justin Fields. It actually doesn't matter to me because the Chicago Bears are still in a really good situation, in my opinion. This team has like $70 million in cap space. And no matter what wide receiver they decide to go with through the draft or through free agency to pair with DJ Moore, to pair with whatever quarterback they decide to run with, uh, folks, this defense is playing at a very high level. And they're only a couple of offensive pieces away from having like a really well-rounded offense as far as weapons go, obviously they need a center still. We're going to talk about that in today's video. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content, along with daily Chicago Bears videos. Bears fans, if you try and get this video to 250 likes, that would mean the absolute world to me. So this, like my thoughts on the Bears passing on Justin Fields and drafting a Caleb Williams or whatever, it has nothing to do with with you know justin fields personality or caleb williams personality or caleb williams father what if he comes in and causes drama um i remember seeing a report that an ex bears executive said that justin fields was abrasive with vets and he won't mesh with a new qb if you're thinking the chicago bears are about to draft a quarterback with the first pick the ninth pick Anywhere in the draft and keep Justin Fields, you're actually the R word, but neither here nor there. I look back at the Bears season and it's just interesting because two years ago, a little over a year ago, the Chicago Bears had just won three football games. And, you know, the Justin Fields discourse wasn't really as strong as it is right now. A lot of people were saying like, yeah, dude, just trade the first pick and you know get some weapons through the draft get some weapons through free agency and let's just see what justin fields can do for another season justin fields actually statistically 16 touchdowns nine interceptions i know there's some turnovers there as far as fumbles go but justin fields actually had a really improving season and what we do know about the chicago bears organization is they do like consistency they do like continuity uh, but I read reports like that, you know, with Justin Fields as a rookie having some issues with Andy Dalton and Nick Foles. And I go back in this season and it's just a mixed bag. And I really wish Justin Fields didn't end up getting injured early on in the season so we could see this with a full season. Because I, you know, like the Packers lost week one was brutal. The week two loss to the Buccaneers was brutal. The week three loss to the Kansas City Chiefs was god awful, folks. It was 41 to 10. Justin Fields threw for 99 yards. He had a touchdown. He had an interception. He was the leading rusher. It was a horrible first three weeks of the season. And then they followed it up in week four with a great performance from Justin Fields, thrown for 335 yards, four touchdowns, one interception, along with 25 rushing yards. And their defense gave up 17 points in the fourth quarter. And then he goes down with an injury soon after. And when he comes back healthy, you know, they lose a nail biter, a choke to the Detroit Lions. But they take down the Minnesota Vikings. And then they hit the bye and they take down the Detroit Lions. And then they have a blunder of a loss on the road against Joe Flacco and the Cleveland Browns. They take down Arizona, they take down Atlanta, and then we have the Week 18 loss to the Green Bay Packers. And I just keep going back to this case of, like, Ryan Poles didn't draft this dude. 
Matt Eberflus's job is on the line. Ryan Poles' job is on the line. But if they do decide to draft a quarterback with pick number one, i.e. Caleb Williams, it's going to pose some locker room issues because there's not a soul in the Bears locker room, as far as players go, that wants Justin Fields to be on a different team. And we look at guys like C.J. Stroud, who this past week said, yeah, man, if the Bears weren't stupid, they'd keep Justin Fields. But who knows? And it's like, I've got all these former players and these former coaches and these current players and these current coaches advocating for Justin Fields. So let's play a hypothetical here. And let's say the Bears do decide to keep Justin Fields. Well, they'll probably trade away from pick number one because I don't think they'll draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick number one. Because if Caleb Williams is truly this generational quarterback, well, you're at least going to trade down to pick number two and develop a couple of, or acquire, I should say, a couple of draft capital for the future and for this current draft. But I will tell you this. Justin Fields being paired up with this rushing attack and being paired up with DJ Moore, Marvin Harrison Jr., and or a player like Romeo Dunze or Brock Bowers, uh, folks, I'd be terrified to play the Chicago Bears. No matter what your thoughts are on Justin Fields, if you give this dude DJ Moore, who just had a career season with him, 96 catches, over 1,300 yards, eight touchdowns. He averaged just under 15 yards per or carry reception. Jesus, it's terrifying because when I watch Justin Fields, like I know this dude can play. I know this dude can throw. Clearly, I know this dude can run, but I know he can make plays. Yes, there have been some turnovers. Folks, when we look at the offensive line and I look at like my center and Lucas Patrick, it was a huge blunder. And I'm thinking to myself, if you give Justin Fields at least another season with a new offensive coordinator and Shane Waldron, and you give him more threats than DJ Moore and Cole Komet, and Cole Komet's assurgence was mainly the second half, like, that's powerful. You know, if you have an offense with DJ Moore, Marvin Harrison Jr., Cole Komet, and one of either Roma Dunze or, uh, you know, Brock Bowers or whatever the hell they decide to do at pick number nine. Like, that's a talented offense. But, folks, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I still, <laughs> it's funny, bear. I still don't think they're going to keep Justin Fields. I really don't. And we go back to the management staff, and it's like the ownership in Chicago is completely lost. They're kind of hesitant to spend money. They've been spending some money recently, but like, I don't know, man. I, we'll know soon. We'll know in less than a month. But I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on the whole, like, sounds so goofy to even say this out loud. Justin Fields unfollowing the Chicago Bears on Instagram. Like, what is this, a relationship? Like, let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. And we'll see you next time.